On today's Taste Talk, we're talking all things wine. Hello and welcome to this Wine Tasting Masterclass. I'm Georgina Burnett. Now, in recent years, we've become a world of amateur wine connoisseurs, spending hours choosing, talking about, and of course, drinking our favorite drops. But how many of us really know our Shiraz from our Cabernet? And when faced with endless shelves of red, whites, rosés, and sparkling wines at the supermarket, how many of us can confidently pick a bottle and know it will suit our tastes? Well, fear not, because help is at hand today, as I'm joined by head winemaker at Australian Rosemount Estate vineyard Matt Cook. So nice to have you here Matt. Thanks Georgina, it's great to be here. So uh, today is uh, Matt is going to give us a masterclass specifically on wine blends which are becoming ever more popular. So we're live today so if you want to get your wine related questions into us please use the box on screen and if you're tweeting use the hashtag Studio Talk TV. So first of all Matt how popular are blended wines these days and how good are they both taste and quality wise compared to the, the straight varieties? Sure, blended wines are extremely popular. They are really a combination of two or more varieties. We're blending those flavours and textures together, coming up with a complete round wine and really uh, something to be enjoyed. So what are some of the most popular blends, would you say? Popular blends really are, I suppose, for certainly Australian as Semillon Sauvignon Blancs and Chardonnay Semillons. We've got the Shiraz Cabernet blends, but blending two varieties, two or more varieties, the flavour profile just expands and it gives consumers more choice, so why not? So apart from that, why, why else would you blend wines? We're blending really to increase the flavour and the texture and add more diversity to wine. So rather than having a single variety, which is fantastic, why not add two or more and just add complexity and more flavour? So that's, that's really the essence. Right, well let's get down to business sure. <laughs> and start trying some of the wines you've brought today. So what have you got for us first of all? We've got six wines to try. We've got three whites and three reds. So okay. we'll have a look at the first white, which is a Gewurz Tremina Riesling, which is a GTR. Oh, okay. This is a lovely blend of Tremina Riesling, a Tremina grape variety and Riesling. Um, lovely and spicy and zesty. So what we do do is we, we're we looking at the, or having a smell, so we're swirling the glass, smelling the wine, then putting, having a smell, and really trying to get the ar aroma and lift, and we should be seeing some light cheese mm. and some tropical fruit flavours jumping out. Fruity. Yeah, yeah, very. We then have a taste. Oh, that's Rich. nice. Rich, round, lovely and chilled, but mm. round, soft. Again, a lovely spicy element to it. Yeah. Goes very well with Asian food, so a great combination. Mm. It's really fruity, isn't it? Very fruity, mm. and that's the, the Tremina grape variety. It's got a, a lovely vibrancy, and then we're adding Riesling to really give it a bit more length and line. So mm. a great wine, complete wine. You can see the flavours from two, the two varieties and they're melding together. So a really nice opening wine. And what percentage is that one? That's roughly around 60% uh, Gewurz Tremina and 40% uh, Riesling. And the alcohol content? Is the alcohol, alcohol content on this wine is roughly around 10%. Right. So it's actually quite low in in wine terms, which really allows it to be more accessible and drinkable. I was going to say, I felt like I could carry on drinking that for you quite a long time. certainly can. It's a good no, job, is Lou. No, no, <laughs> no that's right. Content. Very true. Well, we might try our second wine. Mm -hmm. This is our Semillon Sauvignon Blanc blend. Okay. Again, a very popular blend in Australia um, and certainly across here as well in the UK. Blend of two, the two great varieties, Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. When we talk about blending those two varieties, the Semillon is lovely aromatic and citrus, and then the Semillon, uh, the Sauvignon Blanc grape variety is really fruity and um, zesty as well. So mm. they, the two flavours marry. Very, uh, very bright and fresh style. And what about blend-wise? What's the percentage on that one? This is roughly around 70% Semillon, 30% Sauvignon Blanc. So we've got the texture and weight of the semillon 
and then we've got the aromatics coming through with the Sauvignon Blanc. So it's a lovely blend. Great wine for um, really pasta and uh, I suppose seafood. Oh, right. That lovely yes. crispness of the varieties mm. coming through, melding very well. I can imagine having mussels with this. Yeah, lovely, <laughs> lovely. Mussels, garlic sauce. <laughs> mm -hmm. And again on the on the palate or on the in the mouth, the wine is lovely and fresh. There's a lot of gooseberries and yep. aromatics coming through, and really a lovely drinkability about the wine. Mm. It doesn't, to, to me, it doesn't feel quite as light as the other one, mm -hmm. so this one's... This one's a step up in alcohol. Yeah. It's probably around 12%, okay. 12 to 12 and a half, and that just depends. But again, it's not over the top. Mm -hmm. It's still fresh and vibrant, but also got a lovely drinkability. So a step up, but still round and soft. Yeah. Okay. Our third, Getting through them. <laughs> yeah, we are. Our third white. This should be a bit of fun. The Chardonnay and Semillon grape varieties. Chardonnay is the richer, fuller variety. And the Semillon, as we saw in the uh, Semillon Sauvignon, it's, it's cutting through that uh, richness and adding a little bit more zest. So right. we're sort of moving up in flavour and this yeah. should be more full bodied, but it's still got that Semillon to bring it back. So what's the um, alcohol content of this? This one's 13 percent, so this one's okay. a little bit higher, but again that also comes through with the fullness mm -hmm. and the roundness and I suppose a little bit more texture on the on the palate of the wine. Um, probably Chardonnay is the most widely planted variety in Australia and Semillon carries really, I suppose the Semillon citrus characters cut through that richness and fatness and, and gives it texture. Um, all of these whites really don't see much oak in okay. the storage, so they're all about the flavour from the vineyard. We want to bring that through into the into the wine right, glass. Right, okay, nice. So this should be a little bit more peachy and pineapple and tro tropical mm, flavours. Yeah. And then a little bit broader. Yes. Mm. So we've gone from a lovely, fresh, vibrant, lighter style, through the, the citrus and the crisp and the brighter characters. And then we've got a little bit more fuller and richer characters. So we've got, across the three blends, we've got a flavor for everyone really. So it's a great combination uh, of the varieties matching together to give a, uh, a full flavor. That one feels more like one I'd have of my dinner in yeah, the evening. Yeah, exactly. No, great, yeah. great food wine. Yeah. Um, really rich. Goes with a variety of foods. Again, that creamy pasta could go well with turkey as well for Christmas. Okay, yes. As, as will a couple of the reds, which we'll have a look mm. at. But it's a great combination and it's a really good versatile wine for food. Lovely. Well, don't forget, guys, that we're live, so do keep those questions coming in. Uh, let's take our first viewer question from uh, Thomas Charles Whitman. Sometimes when serving wine to my guests, I feel I should have the theatre of a traditional cork. Does this have any bearing on the taste or quality of wine, or am I just being decadent? You know what? I'm exactly the same. I sometimes miss the cork. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. But we've got screw cap across all of our wines, and so for us, this gives the accessibility and the yeah. brightness and I suppose the matching of the flavours that we've got in the in the bottle. Just the ease of opening a, a screw cap is something that really sits well with, with our style. And putting it away as yep. well if you're going to go back to it later. And yeah, exactly. It's, it's getting used to it, I think, really, more than anything, isn't it? No, it is. It's, it's making that change. It's getting used to it, but certainly from a quality perspective, no issues. We're really comfortable with it. In fact, it gives us more consistency across all of our wines. So really comfortable and you'll thoroughly, Thomas, you'll thoroughly enjoy all screw cap wines. There you go, Thomas. You can uh, <laughs> you can rest assured that the no cork is fine. So, um, Let's go with uh, Kate's question. Oh, I can't see hers at the moment. I saw hers earlier. But uh, we've got one from uh, Becky Sengol, who says that she tends to prefer lower alcohol wines, 11%, yep. um, as I think I get more flavours out of them whilst ensuring I don't get too intoxicated. Uh, what grape varieties tend to produce lower alcohol wine or is it all to do with the climate? Becky, we had one that was 10% earlier. so uh... We do. And it's a bit of both really, Becky. It's got uh, to do with the varieties as well as when, when we want to pick the grape varieties, I suppose, in the climate. So some varieties become riper at, at lower um, alcohol percentages and others don't, but the wine needs to be in balance. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for wines in balance. 
11%, really I suppose the average around wine would be around 11.5%, 12% and I, we think that is a, a good, uh, I suppose, average. That said, we've got wines lower and we've got wines higher, so we're catering for many flavours. Yeah, okay. Uh, now Kate was asking, um, she likes her white wine with ice, is that a bit of a no-no? <laughs> I, look, I think wine with ice is... Um, at the end of the day, Kate, if you enjoy it, go ahead and do it. Um, that's what we're all about is, it's all about wine. There should be no rules. There's a bit of fun uh, with it. If you really enjoy it like that, who's to say you, you shouldn't? What um, about the wine spritzer? The wine spritzers, well, again, that, that style is, is out there. And um, why are we to say no to Kate? Like, if Kate likes that, that's great. So... <laughs> I'm not saying no, uh, it's certainly from a, a wine side, we're not putting ice in, in wines, etc. But if that's what Kate likes, we've certainly got people in Australia that put ice in wine because of our temperature, so go ahead. That's cool. My mum's always trying to get me to drink spritzers, I think she's <laughs> tried to say something. Yes. Right, let's move on to the reds sure. now. We've got three reds to try. Mm -hmm. The first will be the Grenache Shiraz blending, so a blend of Grenache and Shiraz, yep. the two varieties. Um, lovely, I suppose the Grenache to me is one of the most underrated grape varieties. Very juicy, fragrant um, grape variety. Mm -hmm. And then we're adding the Shiraz to come through and give it a little bit more texture and weight. So mm -hmm. it's a play with the two grape varieties. We're using roughly around 70% Grenache and 30% Shiraz in this blend. And we really want the Grenache to highlight, but the Shiraz to come through and give it a little bit more weight and texture. When you're talking about weight, do you, are you talking about the, um, the body or the alcohol content? Talking or? about the body of right. the wine on okay. the palate, on our, on our tongue, okay. and in our mouth. I think, excuse me, a lot of what we're looking for is we're looking for the combination of the two varieties and how the tannins and the ma and the wine feels in your mouth and fills it out so mm -hmm. that's the body but again the the berry lift it's really got a, a big lovely. fragrant mm. and it is quite soft and round and accessible i would be sat by a fire drinking this that's what that's making me feel mm -hmm. like so what's the um what's the alcohol content of that one roughly around 13 percent 13 okay. to 13 and a half um, Grenache we would generally pick a little bit riper and then the Shiraz will keep a little bit lower just to add the flavours because we're looking for more um, I suppose the spiciness coming through from the Grenache as well so. What sort of food would you pair that with as well? I think a multitude of foods. Uh, foods. This could go extreme because of the softness of the tannins and, and in the mouth it could go really well with I suppose oily fish Right. as well as chicken, mm -hmm. so white meat as well. And then it could go just as well with um, bangers and mash, <laughs> that side of things. So it's got a lovely versatility to mm. it, this wine. Um, it's a real favourite for us. Mm. Delicious, that's really nice. I'm a big red fan. <laughs> oh, no, that is, it's the softness and accessibility that mm. we're really looking for. Especially at this time of year as well. Yeah, no, very much. Our next one we'll try is the blend of Shiraz and Cabernet. And as you said in the, um, in the introduction, really the two big players in the, in the category, certainly for Australia. And a, probably our best known blend in Australia is the blending of Shiraz and Cabernet. Two very strong and noble grape varieties, but we're trying to blend and make them appear one. So that's the fun part right, with these okay. two. There must be, you must get a, a great sense of satisfaction from seeing people tasting your wine and, yeah. and really enjoying it. No, I think that, that in essence is, you know, I suppose the joy from winemaking is that you get to create something, you get to create a blend, a wine, you get to put it in front of people and, you know, more often than not people love the wine and it's just the joy that you see. So yeah. it's, it is a great job, we thoroughly enjoy it. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Good. <laughs> Good. I can tell you now. So this is a little bit more intense mm, on the nose, so yeah. it's got more, um, I suppose, spice and black fruits coming through. Just on smell, a lot of people not, don't necessarily smell wine, but it's something that we'd encourage people to do is just to have a smell and see what flavours jump out of the glass because it is uh, exciting. 
I feel like that's reminding me of Christmas. Mm -hmm. So very much so. It's got a warm glow yeah. to it. It's mm. got a richness. Um, it's got a velvety character mm. to it, which we talk about in wine terms, which just gives it a, a lovely, um, I suppose, lingering across your tongue that makes it, it feel ex really nice and, and round. I want some uh, Christmas pudding with yeah, it. Yeah, go for it. Look, combination <laughs> as well. This, this could go very well with turkey. It can go very well with Christmas pudding as well. Mm. So the ver versatility of all these wines, I suppose, is the highlight of, the, of what we're looking for. Delicious. But, but the two varieties, the Shiraz and the Cabernet, Shiraz is a lot, um, I suppose, more spicy, and then the Cabernet gives it a bit more power. So the two blend, two varieties coming together just give that type of uh, blend, so a bit of fun. So we were just talking about Christmas dinner. We actually, we've got a question from Sylvia saying, what goes down well with uh, turkey roast? I mean, what's, you know, all, the, all these are tasting delicious, but if you were to pick one particular wine, which one would you go for? If I'm picking one on white and red, because I'm going to go two, <laughs> uh, to me, the Chardonnay Semillon yeah. in the white, because of the big, bigger, fruitier characteristics, go very well with turkey. And then really the Shiraz Cabernet, I, I think, would go extremely well as well. The, the uh, spiciness of the Shiraz and the fullness and black fruits of the Cabernet. The tannins are quite soft, and so it's not going to overpower the, the turkey flavour. Right, so, OK. Really good, uh, I suppose, one white, one red, whichever way you like. I bet Christmas Day at yours is great, isn't it? It's good fun. <laughs> it's always uh, you're never short of a glass or two, mm. and we have a bit of fun. So our last red to try yes. is the blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. OK. So again, as, as we're shouting out on our labels as well, we're talking... Uh, flavours and textures to the consumer on the front palette, on the front label as well. So soft and smooth, we're saying here. So hopefully those flavours come through yep. in the glass. So this is the blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. We're looking at roughly around 60% Cabernet Sauvignon and 40% Merlot. This is interesting because I quite often choose a Merlot actually. Yep. So Merlot's more of a blend. A filler, we would say it fills, um, Cabernet can often um, lack a little punch in the middle and so the Merlot grape variety comes in and adds that lovely texture all the way through the, on the, on the palate. But we should be seeing more red to black fruit on the nose, so there's some glazed cherries coming through that side of thing. Mm. Again, as the as we discussed in the white, these reds are see minimal oak, so they're really the flavour from the vineyard we yeah. want to capture in the bottle, and it's all about freshness and vibrancy um, and full flavour. Delicious. So a, a different flavour profile to the. Certainly the Grenache Shiraz, which is more lighter strawberry cherry. Mm. The Shiraz Cabernet's got a little spiciness um, coming through. And then the Cabernet Merlot, combination of the two, two grape varieties, giving more black fruits and plums characteristics. So again, through the blend, Rosemount blend tier, we really have a flavour for a lot of people. And that's what we're, the fun part is, blending the two varieties, two or three varieties to try and deliver something as full and round and rich as these wines. Now I more often than not go for red wine and yep. I've really enjoyed that first white one. <laughs> yeah, no, great. So let's have some more of that because no, we're sure. getting to the end. So <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm going to make the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. That's the Goyce Tremaine Riesling. Really well, delicious. Yeah. Really delicious. Go on, more of a glass. Oh, please, you would like so. a full one. Why not? Absolutely delicious. That's fantastic. Is it a bad thing to go from red back to white again? Or? No, not necessarily. Um, I think, really, there's no rules. <laughs> yes. If that's what you want, that's, that's great. So I suppose to everyone out there, that is the, the joy of wine, is that there's no rules, no one's wrong. Uh, have, a, have a play. Mm. And that's what we're all about. Absolutely delicious. Really nice. Good. It's kind of reminded me of summer again. Yeah, oh well. <laughs> we need it. We need we it. We do, yes. We're yes, as well. no, that's so. for sure. Fantastic stuff. Well, Good. we've run out of time. Thank you ever so much for that, Matt. And uh, for more information about the wines we've been tasting today, visit the Rosemount Estate page on Facebook. Thanks for watching.